Are you about to click buy on something? Well, pause before you do so because I'm gonna talk about some popular interior design trends and choices that are a pain to maintain. You may be about to buy something that is going to cost you so much time and effort that it may not be worth it. The first interior design choice that is a pain to maintain is the matte kitchen cabinet. Now I have matte kitchen cabinets and I'll tell you, I dedicate five minutes of every day to wiping down the cabinets or sometimes I just leave the fingerprints on there and I'll make it into a little bit of art. I have art cabinets. Matte cabinets are such a pain because you can see every little bit of grime on there. Even if you brew some tea, you will see all the condensation on that kitchen cabinet. It is like a projector. It it is such a pain to maintain. And this is gonna happen even if you have handles. I have handles on my cabinets and still, and still they're covered in my fingerprints. Oh my gosh, I don't even need to go get fingerprinted anymore. The people from UPS can just come here and take my fingerprints off my kitchen cabinets. It is such a pain. I do not recommend it. If you do not wanna see yourself in the kitchen wiping down your cabinets all of the time, do not get matte kitchen cabinets. Go with something with a little bit of a higher sheen. It will save you so much time. And that doesn't mean that you can't do black. You can still do something black and you, or something dark. You can still keep it contemporary, but do something with a handle. Do something that is glossier. It will just save you so much time and effort. Now, speaking of having my fingerprints absolutely everywhere, the next interior design choice that is a pain to maintain is the non-fingerprint proof appliance. Now, Home Depot was having a sale on appliances and I was like, I'm about to get my new appliances on a deal. And I did, and I did, it was a great deal. However, However, I have microfiber towels on subscribe and save. That's where I am in my life because it can be so difficult to wipe down the refrigerator. And I have a refrigerator without handles. My wife goes, well, why did you need it without handles? Why couldn't we just use handles like a normal person? I did it for the design, right? I did it and they get messy, right? So that's just something to take into consideration. Make sure that your appliances are fingerprint proof before you buy them, especially if you have kiddos in the house or if you're just messy like me. Now everyone loves these, but I do not think that you should get open nightstands because they're a pain to maintain. When you have an open nightstand, you don't have any storage. So if you don't know what an open nightstand is, that just means a nightstand that um, is completely open. So even if it does have a shelf, that shelf is open, there is no drawer front. And this can be something that has like a shelf or shelves, or it doesn't have anything, it's just like a tabletop. That is what an open nightstand can be. Your nightstand is the place where you need to keep all the things, all of your medications, your books, the things for the things that adults do in their bedroom, that is where you keep them. You keep them in your nightstand. You don't need to have all those things out on display. I don't want to know what is in your nightstand. I would rather keep it a mystery. And frankly, no one else wants to know either. That is something a little bit more intimate, a little bit more private that you want to conceal. And even if no one's coming in your bedroom, I don't, there are just some things you don't want to walk into your bedroom and see. You don't want to walk into the room that I've spent months designing and be like, oh, you know what? This room looks nice, but what flavor of Tums are those, right? It just draws attention to things that you don't want to draw attention to. And it creates visual clutter and it inhibits you from like really designing it, right? Because if you have the open nightstand, all of your clutter kind of migrates to the top because there are no shelves. And so you have clutter, add more practical items like books, add medications and water on top of your nightstand as opposed to decor. So maybe do something closed, something that has a drawer with a drawer front so that you can conceal those things. And then you can go back to using the top or whatever or open portions of the nightstand that you have for decor. I think having decor in your nightstand is so powerful and if you have the drawers, you can establish the balance. But if you don't have drawers, don't style your nightstand. It just doesn't make any sense. Now, if you already have an open nightstand and you don't wanna buy a new one because things cost money and we wanna save our money, use decorative boxes. Use decorative boxes for those items that aren't as pretty. And then the decorative box can be something that's pretty because it is decorative, but you are still getting a function and not having to sacrifice function for style. The next thing that is a pain to maintain is a crystal chandelier. Now, I love crystal chandeliers. They're glorious, they're beautiful, but obviously they're a pain to maintain because you have a million crystals on them. The chandelier in my bedroom has 490 crystals. I know because I put them all up on myself. <laughs> That's a lot of crystals. And each and every crystal needs to be dusted. Not all the time. I'm not saying you need to get out there with your Swiffer every week. I've installed it a month ago. I've not dusted it yet. And I don't care if you're gonna judge me because I'm not getting up there to do it. But you do need to maintain them, right? They accumulate dust, spider webs, all that. So you do need to dust them. And it's not something really that you can just throw your Swiffer up there. You need to get up there and individually kind of dust them and make sure that they look clean. 
because if you just throw your Swiffer up there, chances are you'll knock them off and you'll break the crystals and they're really hard to replace because sometimes manufacturers don't just send you that. You might have to buy a whole new thing and that's way too expensive. I actually went to Restoration Hardware, asked them how they clean theirs and they said, yeah, we actually just do an assembly line and we all line up and take each crystal off individually and polish it. And I was like, thank you for that advice that I'm never going to take. I'm not doing that. <laughs> I'd rather just stand up there on my ladder, but I get the point. So if you don't want to get up there and dust, you do not want to get a crystal chandelier. You might want to get something that um, is not made of glass really at all, because glass is something where you can see the dust, you can see the murkiness, you can see the cobwebs very, very, very easily. Yes, you should be cleaning it, but again, I, I'm, I'm just realistic. I'm realistic when it comes to design. What you want to do instead is maybe get something metal um, or something with a shade. It's a little bit easier to dust. It's a little bit less fragile, so you really can't just throw those Swiffer up there and get the job done. It doesn't have to be something that you do very delicately. The way I got around with this is one, I just don't care. So that's number one. And two, um, my room is very dark, so you can't see the imperfections quite as much. Well, that is just something to take into consideration before you buy a very expensive crystal chandelier and you throw it up there, not thinking about the fact that you need to clean it. And remember, chandeliers go in the ceiling, which means you you have to get on a ladder to clean it. So don't buy one also if you don't own a ladder because you're just gonna be sitting there confused um, and not really knowing what to do. Now you may or may not regret this one, but the next interior design mistake that is a pain to maintain is the sharp furniture. Sharp furniture, I have a whole welt on my leg right now. I thought there was something, I thought I had a growth, but it really was from me running into a table with a sharp corner. You do not want to get furniture with sharp corners because it can just be a hazard to you, your children, anyone else in the household. And I don't know about you, my dog gets the zoomies and sometimes he's like, he's a runner, he's a track star. He really is. And he'll run into stuff and and I prefer to run into something that's not super sharp. I, you know, he lives in his own world. I can't stop him from running into stuff. He's a dog. You don't want to hurt yourself. It's a hazard. This is something that I always say to people who have kids. And when you add um, furniture that doesn't have sharp edges, it just adds an element of softness, something a little bit more inviting, something a little bit less harsh into your space. So there's not only a design benefit, but there's benefit, but there's also a practicality benefit there as well. Now this can apply to everything. I'd rather you have a sofa with like a corner, like a sharp corner, than a concrete coffee table, right? because at least the sofa corner has some, um, you know, board and um, some batten, not some board, some batten wrapped around it, right, to protect you. But that concrete coffee table doesn't have anything there and you might trip it with your knee. So something to take in consideration when you are buying your tables, your decorative accents, maybe stay away from the things that are super sharp. The next trend that is a pain to maintain is the wall-to-wall -wall marble. Now, I don't even know who I'm talking to because who can afford this? That's what I want to know. It's a pain to maintain your bank account to be able to buy into this trend. But wall-to-wall -wall marble is such a pain because marble is porous. If you, if you want to have a little glass of wine in the shower, because I sure do from time to time, and you spill it, you've ruined your marble. If you like to use purple shampoo and you spill it, you've ruined your marble. When you have marble wall to wall, you're just creating more problems for yourself. If you only have it in one place, you're like, okay, maybe I'll just shampoo on the other side of the shower, right? I'll just move my butt over here. <laughs> when it's wall to wall, there are no safe spaces. There are no safe spaces for you. I don't think you should invest in something so expensive that you have to be, you have to walk around eggshells on. You shouldn't have to walk on eggshells in your entire house. No one should make you feel that way and your home decor and furniture certainly shouldn't make you feel that way. That's messed up. Plus wall to wall marble is so visually distracting. I'm like, what's going on here? There's too much going on. I'm too invested. It is so intricate that I'm not even listening to you while you're telling me a really important story. We don't want to do that to people. So just skip out on this trend altogether. This one is me just being nitpicky, but another trend that is a pain to maintain is the Ottoman trend. Now, a lot of people introduce Ottomans when they don't want to interrupt the sight line with new accent chairs. And I'm with you for that. I've made tons of videos where I tell you to do that. So I'm not gonna sit here and be a hypocrite. I know I've said it, okay? So you don't need to type about it. I know I've said it. But the issue with the Ottoman, the reason why Ottomans can be a pain to maintain is that they're always moving around. With Ottomans, people are moving around and adjusting and they're putting them in different places and you always have to put it back. You always have to put it back and it is such a pain. Another problem with the Ottoman is people run into them because they don't see them because they're not in like the traditional sight line. So someone will run into them, they'll trip over them. It's a whole thing and I'm really not making a joke. People trip on these things all the time and they can really be a hazard. I just don't know if they're worth it. 
Also, they're a pain to maintain because you have to maintain your butt because you have to eat more food to cushion your butt because those things are so damn uncomfortable. There are a few ottomans in this world that I truly find comfortable and you really don't end up using them for additional seating anyway. You might use them to put your feet up or something like that, but people don't end up sitting on them and they buy new chairs anyway. So what was the point? What was the reason? What was the reason? What was the reason? What was the reason? And it is so rare to find an ottoman that is made out of sturdy materials like a chair. A lot of the times they become lumpy or frumpy and they kind of slope from you sitting on them and the way that the person sitting on them positions their weight, they show wear, in my opinion, a lot faster than chairs and sofas. And I just think it looks kind of ugly and that's not the, the look we want to give. And since ottomans are so expensive now, companies have decided, hey, this ottoman's $495 and the chair version is $499. I'm gonna, I'm gonna spend the four extra dollars and just get the chair because I'm going to get something way better out of that. The fellow interior decorating, interior design people on YouTube are gonna read me for filth for this one, but I don't care, I live in my own world. <laughs> the next thing that is a pain to maintain is unlacquered brass. Why? Because it is not lacquered. What does that mean? There's no protective coating on it. That means that it will patina naturally. People love the word patina now, so I've used it. It's gonna age. That's what it means. It's going to age, it's going to, it, there's going to be wear and tear and you're going to see it. And sometimes that is good, but sometimes when you just spent $700 on a sink, a sink, you just want it to look brand new for a little bit. They patina, they show wear and tear. So unless you know that you're going to be into the rustic, the vintage, the wear and teariness of something for a long time, skip it being unlacquered and just get it lacquered. You can get brass and it's going to be durable and it's going to stand the test of time. But if it is unlacquered, it is not. So just make sure you're reading the description before you're purchasing these items so that you're not upset. Because if you call up the company and you're like, it's got a spot on it, they're gonna be like, that's the whole point. So keep that in mind before you buy into this trend because I think it's a pain to maintain because you cannot maintain it. This is another thing that I'm kind of going back on something I've said before. I love curved lamps, I'm not gonna stop using them, but curved lamps are a pain to maintain. Why is that? Because every time someone comes in my home, they hit their head on a lamp. And that's my fault, they're gonna sue me, and I don't wanna be sued, and you don't wanna be sued either, right? So, curved lamps are great, they add curvature to the space, they add visual interest, they add height. I, they're giving everything they need to give. They're giving, they're, they're, I'm swiping right on them. They're giving, me, they're giving me life. I want to date this lamp, right? But the problem with them is, is that they curve over, right? They curve over onto your living space. And if you position them correctly, maybe if the, the lampshade lands right over your coffee table, that's great because there's no one standing on the coffee table, right? They're not gonna stand up and hit their head on that. But if it is not perfectly positioned, if you've accidentally moved your sofa which has therefore shifted the lamp you are in some trouble right because if it is shifted off just a little bit someone might stand up and hit their head and you know what I've actually never hit my head on it but my wife she, I had to move out of the living room her brain is full of too much good information for me to concuss her over a lamp right so you just need to be strategic with the placement right someone needs the medical care she's going to provide I, I can't take her out like that that's why I don't love curved lamps the arc lamps that kind of come over because you need to be really tactful with their placement so only put them in places um, where they're directly over a piece of furniture that no one is sitting underneath that has to be the rule from now on otherwise they're paying to maintain because you got to adjust them all the time and every time a guest comes over you're gonna have to give them a hard hat and this is not a construction zone so let's just pass on it. The next interior design choice that is a pain to maintain is the light colored rug. Unless, unless you buy one from my new rug collection with Rugs USA. So this is not an ad, but I want to tell you guys about it. I have a new washable rug collection with Rugs USA. And what does that mean? All the rugs are washable. You can take them and put them in the laundry machine and wash them. So if you have a kid, if you have pets, if you have a messy husband, wife, partner, otherwise, these rugs are for you because they're all contemporary. A lot of them are light, but you can put them in the washing machine and you don't have to start World War III over a, you know, Cheeto stain on your rug. You will survive it. If you want to check out any of these rugs, click the link down in my description box. I've linked it there. Again, this is not an ad. I just wanted to share with you something that I've worked on. Anyway, the next thing that is a pain to maintain though, if you don't buy one of my rugs, is the light colored rug. Because if you wear shoes in your home, which please don't, please don't wear shoes in your house. 
Oh my God, I literally have shoes on right now while I'm filming this though. Look at me, I'm a hypocrite. Don't wear shoes in your home unless you have leg problems or something like that, or you have house shoes. I have house shoes. Um, my house shoes are a pair of Adidas slides that have a bite that my friend's dog took out of them. Iconic, right? If you have a light colored rug and you wear shoes in your home, you're going to get debris all over that. If you have a light colored rug under your dining table and someone spills something, you're going to get food all over it. You want to be able to live in your house and not feel like you're going to damage something because a lot of the time when people get something so light and therefore they're going to damage it, they restrict people from enjoying that wherever the item is. So whether it's a sitting room, a living room, a bedroom, a dining room, you restrict people from that area and then you don't get to appreciate your entire home and you paid for the entire thing so you might as well experience all of it or at least that is my opinion. So so if you are prone to spills, messes, dust, debris, all of those things, maybe you don't have a light rug in your space if it is not a washable one because you don't get to enjoy your space as much or you spend so much time with your Bissell little green machine that you have to email them and ask for a coupon code, but just for yourself, not for your audience because it's getting too expensive to buy a new one every year because that's how hard you use it. So. That's just something to keep in mind. If you don't want to maintain the white furniture, don't buy white furniture. Now, I have white furniture, I love it, and I'm happy to maintain it, but I also don't have any kids, and it's literally my job, and I realize that 99.9% .9 of people don't have the same life as me, so I gotta be realistic about it, right? And the last interior design choice that is a pain to maintain is glass furniture. Glass furniture, it is so pretty. It is so pretty until one speck of dust decides to come and plague your life. There's nothing that shows dust quite like glass. It is such a pain. It looks, it looks bad instantly. Dust is like, hey, you like this? Oh, you thought you were wrong. You just have to wipe it off all the time. And it doesn't matter how many paper towels you use, how much Windex you buy, how many microfiber towels you buy from Scrub Daddy, there's always a streak on it. There is always a streak on it. It is such a pain. It makes me truly neurotic. I just hate maintaining it. That doesn't mean that glass furniture can't look good because it totally can, but you need to be cleaning all day long. You need to quit your job and just clean because that's what you have to do to maintain this. You can also see fingerprints and when you have glass furniture and it is tiered or even if it's not tiered, you need to anchor that, which means you're buying an extra level of decor. If you have a black coffee table and you want to put your decor on it, you can just put your decor right on there, right? If you have a glass coffee table, you need to put your decor on a tray because otherwise it gets lost. It turns into like a house of mirrors. I can't see it. Where did it go? Is it lost in Hermione's bag? I have no idea where it is. I can't see it because the table is glass. So we don't want to be in that situation. Let's just skip out on the glass furniture altogether. It's a pain. It ends up costing more money and it costs way too much time to maintain. And the same thing goes for acrylic and honestly mirrored furniture as well. But we, we, we've all hated on that enough. I don't need to, I, I don't need to beat a dead horse, right? There's no reason for that, but that's a pain to maintain. But if you have the time to maintain it, I personally think it looks good. Everyone who hates on glam, I think glam looks good. I think glam looks good. I mean, I, I can't dress the way I do. I can't only wear like sweatpants and look frumpy all the time and have a glam house. It's just kind of inconsistent with my personality, but no, but no, that if I could keep up with that, like in terms of fashion, that's exactly where I would be. I love glam and let's stop the glam hate. Okay, you guys, that is it for today's video. Those are some interior design trends, interior design choices that are pain to maintain. So you just maybe want to think twice before buying into them or don't. Just do them and just know that they require a little bit of upkeep, but that's okay. We just want to do things in our home that we love, even if some of those things require a little bit of effort. What is another design trend that is a pain to maintain? Let me know down in the comments. I want to hear your thoughts. And if you liked today's video, please don't forget to subscribe. But until next time, have a beautiful day.